People can carry pathogens on their skin, in their hair, on their hands, and in their digestive system or respiratory tract. Infected workers who handle produce and juice and have poor personal hygiene are an important cause of food contamination and foodborne illness outbreaks. Under current good manufacturing practices, everyone working in direct contact with food, food contact surfaces, and food packaging materials should use good hygienic practices to protect against contamination of the food. Personal hygiene begins at home. This includes bathing, washing hair, and wearing clean clothes daily. Personal hygiene continues at the plant by wearing clean smocks, hair nets, and clean gloves where appropriate. Human hands are used for more than just handling food. They are used to greet others, to comb hair, to eat, to scratch, and to handle unsanitary objects. And they are used when using the toilet. During these activities, hands may become contaminated with harmful microorganisms and in some cases harmful chemical substances. These microorganisms or chemicals can be transferred to food or food contact surfaces if hands are not washed thoroughly. Employees should know when and how to properly wash their hands. Fingernails should be trimmed and maintained so that hand washing will effectively remove soil from under and around them. Polished or painted fingernails should be adequately cleaned and gloves should be worn. Hands should always be washed before food preparation, after touching human body parts, after using the toilet, after coughing, sneezing, using a handkerchief or tissue, after using tobacco, eating, or drinking, after engaging in any activity that may contaminate the hands, such as taking out the garbage, handling cleaning chemicals, or picking up dropped items, after caring for or touching animals, and before returning to the workstation, regardless of the reason for leaving the station. Thorough hand washing is important in preventing illness. Employees should follow these steps to properly wash hands. Wet hands with warm running water. Apply a liberal amount of soap to the hands. The surface of the hands, wrists, and forearms should be scrubbed and rubbed vigorously for at least 20 seconds. The areas in between the fingers, under nails, and forearms should also be scrubbed and rubbed. Particular attention should be paid to washing the fingertips. Many microorganisms can be removed by friction alone. Hands should be rinsed under clean, warm, running water and then dried with a clean, disposable towel. Hand washing stations should be equipped with hot and cold running water under pressure, a supply of soap, and disposable single-use towels. Warm water is recommended because cold water does not remove oils on the hands that may harbor microorganisms. Individual disposable towels are more sanitary than cloth towels for drying hands and are the preferred hand drying devices. Adequate waste containers should be supplied for used towels. Company expectations for proper hygiene and hand washing procedures should be clearly defined in pre-employment and periodic training programs. New employees should receive training prior to beginning employment, even if it takes considerable time and effort. Principles of personal hygiene and sanitation should be periodically reviewed with all employees. Prominently placed signs or posters are a good reminder. Clothing worn by employees in food processing and production areas should be kept clean. Dirty and soiled clothes can be a source of contamination of food products. Clean uniforms, aprons, or other outer garments that are put on after an employee gets to work can help minimize contamination from sources outside the processing facility. Clothing, food for meals or snacks, or other personal belongings should be stored in lockers or break room areas that are located away from processing areas or areas where equipment or utensils are washed. Hair in food can be a source of both microbiological and physical contamination. Food workers should be encouraged to keep their hair clean and should wear appropriate hair and or beard restraints at all times in food processing areas to prevent contamination of the finished products. Under current good manufacturing practices, rings, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, watches, and other body part ornaments should not be worn because they can harbor microorganisms that can cause foodborne illness. Jewelry can also fall into food, causing a physical hazard. All jewelry should be removed prior to entering the processing facility, with the exception of plain wedding bands. 
Employees should eat food, chew gum, drink beverages, or use tobacco only in designated areas away from food or food packaging materials or where equipment or utensils are washed. Healthy people can frequently harbor pathogens in their mouth and respiratory tract. Pathogens can move to employees' hands and then to the food products that they are processing when hand-to-mouth contact occurs. Hands should be washed every time employees return to work. Perspiration may contaminate the food, food contact surfaces, hands, and clothing. Wiping a sweaty brow with a cloth or hand introduces potential contamination. Ideally, the processing facility should be maintained at cool temperatures to minimize perspiration. Diarrhea or open lesions are also a source of pathogens. Any employee with symptoms associated with acute gastrointestinal illness, such as vomiting, diarrhea, fever, or jaundice, should be prohibited from working with food. Company policy should encourage employees to report illnesses to their supervisor so that the employee may be reassigned to a job that doesn't require contact with food. Employees diagnosed with Salmonella typhi, Shigella, Entamoeba histolytica, E. coli 0157H7, Hepatitis A or norovirus should not perform jobs that require contact with food or food contact services until a doctor determines that they are disease free. All of these diseases are easily transferred to foods and are considered severe health hazards. Exposed areas of arms, wrists, and forearms that contain infected wounds should be completely covered by a dry, tight-fitting, impermeable bandage. Cuts or burns on the food worker's hands should be thoroughly bandaged and covered with a clean glove. Food workers should minimize hand contact with produce. Use suitable utensils such as tongs, spatulas, or single-use gloves where possible. Single-use gloves are frequently used to avoid direct hand contact, but gloves may create a false sense of security. Dirty gloves, like dirty hands, can contaminate products. Single-use gloves should never be washed. They should always be thrown away when they need to be changed. And employees should put on fresh gloves only after thoroughly washing his or her hands. Employees should use sanitizer hand dips frequently to reduce recontamination while on the processing line, but not to replace hand washing. Employees should understand the importance of maintaining clean gloves. Single-use gloves should be changed after any activity that may contaminate them. In other words, single-use gloves should be changed as often as needed and for the same reasons an employee would wash their bare hands. If non-disposable gloves, such as rubber gloves, are used in the facility, they should be washed as frequently as bare hands. Hands should be washed before and after putting on non-disposable gloves. Conveniently located and properly equipped hand washing facilities are one key to getting employees to wash their hands. Hand washing stations should be located in or adjacent to restrooms and should also be located in food processing areas. Hand washing stations should be clean and well maintained and should not be used for purposes other than hand washing. Hand or glove dips also may be considered. Sanitizers designed for this purpose can be obtained from sanitation supply companies and should be prepared according to the label instructions. The sanitizing solution should be monitored frequently to ensure the proper concentration is maintained. Hand or glove dips are only appropriate for use with clean hands or clean gloves. These dips are not a substitute for proper hand washing. Boot dips are sometimes used to sanitize the bottom of boots or shoes when an employee moves from one part of the facility to another. When properly maintained, boot dips can reduce the spread of microorganisms throughout a facility. However, the sanitizing solution in boot dips can easily become depleted. The sanitizer solution should be monitored frequently to ensure the proper concentration is maintained. Toilet facilities are required for all employees. Employee restrooms should be conveniently located and accessible to employees during all hours of operation. Smocks and gloves should be left in the designated processing area. Managers play a very important role in helping their employees prevent contamination of food products, such as providing health and hygiene training programs for employees. Managers should provide a clear understanding of the proper personal hygiene practices and company policies regarding illness and other health conditions 
such as infected wounds that could contaminate products. Policies should provide reassurance that employees will not lose their jobs if they report an illness or a communicable disease. Management should continually emphasize how important it is for employees to maintain a high level of cleanliness and good health and should serve as role models for good work habits and acceptable hygienic practices. They should also ensure that visitors follow the same hygienic practices as employees and have policies in place that prevent unauthorized personnel from being in food processing areas. Adequate training is very important and should be documented. Once employees understand what is expected of them, effective supervision of employee practices in food processing areas should be used to ensure that employees follow proper procedures. Training should be reviewed whenever incorrect practices are observed. Employees are more likely to follow good personal hygiene practices when facilities and supplies are adequate. Management is responsible for providing properly located and maintained facilities and supplies that will allow employees to adhere to personal hygiene requirements. Management should provide and maintain the following facilities. Dressing and changing rooms that are adequate and properly maintained. Laundry services and or uniform services as necessary. Designated employee areas for breaks where eating and drinking are allowed. Strategically placed and well-stocked hand washing facilities throughout the production area. In summary, juice processing operations should be protected from contamination with microorganisms or foreign substances. Achieving this goal requires a healthy, clean, and properly trained workforce that understands the importance of proper hand washing techniques and other personal hygiene practices. Adequate training programs and management supervision are important elements in a program to ensure preparation of safe juice.